John Chrysostom said, no matter where you are, you can set up your sanctuary, just have pure intentions. Neither place nor time will be an obstacle. Concentrate your mind, be wholly composed in prayer. God is not troubled by any place. God only desires a clear and fervent mind. Welcome to Wanstead Parish Eucharist. I'm Canon Anne, and on behalf of Father Jack, our rector, and the whole of the ministry team, I welcome you to this Eucharist on the first Sunday after Trinity. We're in ordinary time now, hence the green. Um, and if you wish to follow the text of the service, then you can download our ordinary time booklet um, from um, the website, from the email. Um, so to help you join in with the, with the responses. Uh, today's first reading um, from Genesis will be read by Mark Taylor, and that can be viewed on, on YouTube or through the email. And the intercessions have been pre um, provided by Ralph Hall. And the full version of those intercessions can again uh, be viewed in our email. Hymns for today's service um, are in the email and can be listened to. They are sung by the Choral Scholars of St. Martin's. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these holy mysteries, let us say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. And so we call to mind our many sins and failings, for those times when we have failed to proclaim the good news, for those times when we have failed to have compassion, for those times when we have failed to reach out to others. And we say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We join in the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone, Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Collect for the First Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. O God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, 
mercifully accept our prayers and because through weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace that in the keeping of your commandments we may please you both in will and deed through Jesus Christ your Son our Lord who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As I said earlier, the first reading um, can be viewed um, on our YouTube from uh, read by Mark and it is from Genesis. We go into the, the Gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned the twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. There's Simon, also known as Peter, his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, enter no town of the Samaritans, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. May I speak in the name of God, who so loved the world that he sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, who came to proclaim the good news, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, who will inspire us to have compassion. Amen. Uh, most days I wake up between five and, and half past and I generally listen to the shipping forecast followed by farming, the farming programme. And I've noticed that during um, the time of lockdown that the farmers um, who grow our crops, particularly at this time of year, are very concerned and very worried because the harvest is plentiful, the strawberries are there, the, the soft fruits are going to be there and all through the summer that cycle of um, food, um, har you know, coming to fruition. And yes, the harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few, the pickers are few because their source of pickers, mainly from Eastern Europe, has been cut off. And so they are in fearful that they will be wasting tons and tons of perfectly good food. The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. And that's the term that Jesus uses in this morning's Gospel. He has been going around, he has been preaching, he has been teaching, but above all, he has been healing. He has been healing people of every kind of disease and sickness, it says. And what he notices with the crowds is that they are harassed and helpless, and he has compassion on them. Now this word in Greek apparently means not just feeling sorry for them, not just saying, oh, that's a shame, 
but has real compassion from the gut, from the heart, a compassion of love that makes and compels somebody to do something about it. And Jesus wants to do something about it. He wants them to be healed and helped and to know the good news. And he says that they are lost like a sheep without a shepherd. And so he calls from his many disciples by this time, the 12 who we're told here uh, for the first time called apostles. He picks those 12 out. Now there is no way that list that I've just read to you, there's no way they would have ended up on an ordination course. There is no way they would have got through the selection process. There's no way they would have got into seminary or rabbinical school or whatever. They were a very motley crew. You know, we have Peter, Simon Peter, hot-headed, always engaging his mouth before his brain, the one who denies Jesus. His brother, his younger brother Andrew, just follows after him. And then we have James and John, who are called the sons of thunder. They also were quick-tempered and they wanted to bring fire down and destroy a town that didn't accept them. They also wanted some power. They wanted to sit one on the right and one on the left of Jesus in the kingdom. So they wouldn't have got through. And then we have Thomas who doubted, had lots of doubts. And Matthew, Matthew the tax collector. Nobody trusted tax collectors. They worked for the occupying power, Rome. And they had to supplement their wages by being dishonest, by taking more than they were expected to. So he wouldn't have got through. And then we have Simon the Zealot. So he was a political activist. We'd have called him a terrorist today. No way he would get in. And then, of course, Judas Iscariot, who betrayed Jesus. These were ordinary people with faults and failings that Jesus called to proclaim the good news. And, but how did they manage to do that? Well, he gave them authority. He sent them out, giving them his authority to go and do that. And each one of us is given that authority at our baptism. We are called to be disciples of Christ. We are called to go out and proclaim the good news. You don't need one of these to do it. It is something that we are all called to do. We don't, also, we're, most of us are not called to stand on the street corners and evangelize. But we are called to proclaim the good news where we are. And where did Jesus first send those disciples? He sent them to those in need, to those who had all manner of sickness, for those who were harassed and helpless. Well, in this time of pandemic, there are plenty who are harassed and helpless and certainly sick. Sick, yes, of the disease itself, sick of other diseases, who are physically, mentally, emotionally sick, sick of the loneliness, sick of the isolation, for some, they are sick, of, sick with worry about the future, sick with worry because they can't feed their families. So much sickness. And how can we alleviate that sickness? How can we have compassion and do anything about it? Well, there are many quite simple ways. When we put some food on somebody's drive in one of the food bank bins, we are showing compassion. We are showing that we care. That is the gospel in action. When we pick up the phone to speak to somebody, to ask how they are, how are they doing, send them a text message, send them an email, send them a card, put a gift on their doorstep. I had a gift on my doorstep yesterday. It was wonderful. You know, showing compassion. That is how we proclaim the good news, by showing compassion. And we can all do that. We can all do that in so many ways. And so at this time when it's difficult, when we're not actually meeting so much with people, but we can proclaim the good news by small acts of kindness and love, which show our compassion in the way that Jesus told the disciples to do. Amen.
until we proclaim our faith in the words of the Creed. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures and ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Strengthen your church to be a power for good in the relief of distress and in the working for a better society. Give us compassion and the will to work for justice. Bless all who come to the church, no matter of colour or creed. Help us to act fairly and honestly towards all those with whom we live and work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear God, help us to be gentle with others and with ourselves. Give us, we pray, the calm that makes for consideration and respect for others that makes us courteous. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless our community here in Wanstead as we continue our journey through this pandemic. We give you thanks for all the good that is being achieved in the community, food banks, shelters, fellowship, help for the homeless and other acts of spontaneous kindness. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for all who are suffering at this time, for all those who are sick. And we pray especially for young Henry Fitzgerald, for Kay Leot Kingham and Simon Tierney, for all others on our prayer list or on our own hearts. The compassion of God reaches out, but is all too often blocked by our indifference. May your healing power rest upon those who are sick. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, your love reaches beyond the grave. And we pray for those who have recently died. Remembering especially Leslie Hughes, whose funeral is tomorrow, Dennis Kay, Jeff Berry, and for all those who are bereaved, for Avril and Caroline and Sandra and their families as they grieve their loved ones. And on this, the third anniversary of the Grenfell Tower Fire, we remember the 72 who died. We pray for all those who mourn their loss. 
Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. And we pray for all those who are still not in proper homes as a result of that fire. We pray for justice and for mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In a moment of silence, I invite you to bring your own prayers and petitions for this coming week before Almighty God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed are the peacemakers, they shall be called children of God. We meet in the name of Christ and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made, to become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, to become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God for ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit he took flesh, as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he went, lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me.
great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. And as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in the one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. And I invite you now to make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit that I should be separated from you. My Lord and my God. Lord Jesus, I have you in my heart as Holy Mary had you in her arms. You have come to me silently. May I carry you with me in my life. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal Father, we thank you for nourishing us with these heavenly gifts. May your commu our communion strengthen us in faith, build us up in hope, and make us grow in love for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. We bow our heads for God's blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you, those whom you love this day, this coming week and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining this Eucharist um, today. Uh, just a reminder that um, you can view the readings and the prayers um, and the music uh, on our website, well, on our YouTube and on Facebook. And tomorrow um, at noon, I'll be back doing uh, midday prayer. And I invite you to join that on again on Facebook or later in the day on YouTube. So have a lovely day and God be with you.